I'm here with Emma Hockridge from the Soil Association and we're going to talk a little bit about GM foods. So, Emma. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for coming to visit us today. I want to talk to you about these purple tomatoes. We're walking through the corridors of a research facility where these fabulous tomatoes have been produced. The purple tomatoes have really high levels of antioxidants. What, it, what are the comparisons and levels of antioxidants between the new special purple tomatoes and normal tomatoes? Well, I think the new purple tomatoes that have been produced are a really interesting example, actually, that actually highlights some of the issues that surround the broader GM debate. So actually, in terms of the, the purple tomatoes themselves, we all know, and from actually just reading the paper that um, the the people that develop the tomato have produced, they actually say that the antioxidants within the tomato are only at comparable levels to what you'd actually find in, say, cranberries or blackberries. They're not even as high as in those berries themselves. They talk about these tomatoes having higher levels of antioxidants. Yeah. How much higher? What we measure is the in vitro antioxidant activity. Mm -hmm. And we can say that roughly three times higher in these tomatoes. Three times higher? Yeah. So, the I mean... hydrophilic, that is, or the compounds that are soluble in, in water. Uh -huh. It does seem to me that this is quite a strong a kind of me a pro-GM media kind of story that's almost been created to try and get people to come around to the idea that, oh, maybe GM is a good thing. It's quite... Um, it's, it's been done on purpose as a kind of nice, fluffy, happy media story. Yeah, when you start to touch them, then you've got yeah. powerful stuff on your fingers. So, so say, um, in terms of antioxidant levels, to eat, say, a fully ripened uh, Miracle GM yeah. tomato, as it were, would be the equivalent of, say, eating how many blueberries? Oh, let's say they contain more or less the same amount. Slightly less than blueberries. Slightly less than blueberries? Yes. So if you... I would go with a blueberry, honestly. Actually, when you delve into what's going on, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So for a start, I mean, these tomatoes have been, um, we've been told that they're cancer-fighting. Very, you know, very strong terms. You know, cancer-fighting is something that people feel really worried and passionate about. Is there any reasonable justification to sell them as cancer fighting? Well, very, very loosely. But I think it's quite, in some ways, irresponsible to, to label um, any kind of fruit and vegetable with that when, when you actually look at it that well for a start purple tomatoes have been around for ages and ages there are traditional varieties that have been um, conventionally grown um, from you know years ago and actually we don't know whether it's just the antioxidants in fruit and vegetables which are the cancer fighting properties so there was lots of talk about this a few years ago but actually um, nutrition sort of science dietetics is a very young science and there's a huge amount that we don't know about what it actually is in fruit and vegetables which gives it its its beneficial um, protective properties. So it could be that there's something quite different in, say, blackberries, blueberries, um, cranberries, etc., which already have these antioxidants, which make them really good for us. And just by engineering in a different gene from a different plant, which, which gives this high level of antioxidants, that isn't necessarily going to make it um, an anti-cancer anti property.